If you are using LUTs to transform your log footage to Rec. 709, you are losing out. You're most likely getting crushed shadows, some color shifts, and you're just skipping one of the most powerful tools in DaVinci Resolve, which is the color space transform. So in this video, I'm going to break down what exactly a CST does, why it's better than using LUTs to transform your footage, and where you should place them in your node trees so that you can get the cleanest results. Here's the problem with actually using LUTs. They are not flexible at all and they're also just baked in transforms. It's kind of like using a filter and then just shoving your image through that filter and hoping that it's gonna look really good. Look, it's gonna definitely convert your footage from log to rec 79, but it gives you absolutely no flexibility and it actually doesn't give you an accurate representation of the colors or a good conversion. So yes, it converts your footage, but it doesn't do it well. No, you don't have accuracy and you don't have flexibility. And those are two things that you really want to be able to have when you are working with your footage, especially if you want to move quickly. So obviously that leaves the question of, well, then what do we use? We spoke about CSTs earlier. So let's talk about what a CST actually is. Basically, a CST is pretty much a way for you to talk to Resolve and say, hey, this footage was shot on Sony S-Log3 and I want it to be changed to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, but with proper tone mapping. So without getting ahead of myself, a CST basically gives you control of two crucial things, which is your color space and your gamma. Your color space is the range of colors that your image contains and your gamma is the brightness and contrast curve of your image. So instead of forcing a conversion onto your footage through a LUT, CSTs perform a precise mathematical conversion which allows you to get more accurate colors, more accurate shadows, more accurate contrast and better reproduction overall. It also has options for tone mapping and gamut compression which help roll off highlights naturally and avoid oversaturated colors. So before we carry on, I just want to say one thing. If you are new to using CSTs, please just do me a favor and do one thing which is go to your project settings, change your timeline color space to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate and then change your output color space to Rec. 709, Gamma 2.4 or whatever it really needs to be for whatever you're outputting to. But this way you're just going to get better results when uh, we put our CST at the end of our node tree which is what we're going to talk about a little bit later but at least you know that for the time being. So yeah, let's get into it. So to show you in an example, here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I have two nodes open. One has the transform LUT for the footage that I'm using and the other one has a CST that's been done correctly. So first I'm going to show you the difference between the LUT and the CST and the transforms that they do. I'm going to show you the problems with the LUT and you can see that compared to the CST which is going to be very helpful. Then I'm going to show you how to use the CST so that you can properly convert your log footage to Rec. 709 and show you the options that you have available. If we turn the CST off, put the LUT on, grab a still, turn the LUT off, put the CST on and do a quick uh, show still. So going full screen, if I play that still, you can actually see those shadows being compressed. So I'm gonna turn that still off and you can see that we have not necessarily more contrast, but actually cleaner blacks. And I'm gonna turn it back on again and a better highlight roll off. So turn it back off. You can see that there isn't more contrast. It just seems that there's more depth to the image. The reds are popping a little bit better and that's because there's a better color reproduction going on and our blacks and shadows are not being crushed and so those tones are coming out nicely. So that's just one example. Let me show you another example. I'm gonna go to this clip over here. If you go full screen and I play that LUT or that still, you can really see, especially here, if you watch this lady's face over here, when I play that still, you can actually see how much of that red is not coming through properly. And so you would probably treat this image very differently than if I was using a CST and I'm seeing that nice, beautiful golden light hitting her face. So if this was my starting place, I would definitely work into those reds, push into that warmth and be able to get better depth out of the image. Whereas if this was my base uh, using the LUT, I would definitely be trying to recreate something like that or you know, probably go in a different direction, which isn't a bad thing, but it's just not the best. Using CSTs is just the better way and we, we've just seen that side by side but how do we actually use CSTs and what is actually going on behind the scenes so let's jump into that 
So how do you actually add a CST? Well, you come up to your effects panel up here and right down here is your color space transform. You can just drag that onto your node. So now that you've added your CST, you may realize that nothing has happened over here. And that's because we still have to tell DaVinci Resolve uh, where we are coming from and where we're going to in terms of our footage. So you may see here, we've got a bunch of options available. And these first two options is pretty much where we want to start. This is where we're gonna tell DaVinci Resolve what color science our camera was using and what gamma our camera was encoding our footage in. And so our input color space is the color science of our camera. So for this, it was shot on an URI. So the color science is URI wide gamut three, which is right over here. For you, it could be black magic. It could be, uh, you know, any of these options and you can sort of Google that to find the, the best one for your camera so that you can get a good conversion. But for me, it's URI wide gamut three. Next one is our input gamma, which again, just to remind you, is the brightness values that were encoded in the footage. So that would pretty much be, you know, your log space. So it's not Apple log, but it definitely is URI log C3. And again, you can Google to find the best one. So the next thing that we have to do is now tell DaVinci Resolve where we want our footage to go to. So again, we have to do this. Uh, Rec 709, we are going to a smaller color space and our output gamma is going to be Rec 709 gamma 2.4. So now that we've done that, we have a good conversion, but we still have some other options here in color space transform, which is really great. We have tone mapping and gamut mapping, which is something we kind of mentioned earlier. but what exactly is tone mapping? Gamut mapping, we can kind of skip over, although I do like to set that to saturation compression and then just leaving it as is, it just helps me get the result I'm looking for. But tone mapping is really what we wanna be focusing on. So our tone mapping method, let's change that to luminance mapping. I'm gonna show you how to do it and then I'm gonna explain what it is. We're gonna tick use custom max input and put that all the way to 10,000 and then select use custom max output we can leave it just as. So now we have got a really good conversion going on, which is really better than before, but we also have got some tone mapping and tone mapping is the process of compressing a wide dynamic range like our log C3 into a narrow dynamic range like Rec. 709, right? So the image looks more natural and pleasing on a typical screen when you do some tone mapping because you are basically giving DaVinci Resolve some parameters and ways to compress that image. It preserves your highlight detail more naturally. It applies a soft roll off in the highlight, so it really helps for skies, practical lights, skin highlights, um, but it doesn't crush the shadows or blow out the midtones or any bright areas. And it keeps your image legal and in broadcast safe for Rec. 79. So it just really helps with a lot of these log spaces. And it's not like just slapping something on and hoping the conversion is good with nothing else there. There's more maths going on in the background. We can get a lot more technical on this, but I'm not going to because we really don't need to just know that this is the right method to use in most cases and it's gonna give you a better result overall. So scrolling down here, like I said, gamut mapping, set that to saturation compression and that's really gonna get you a good result. And that's it, now you have done a correct conversion with tone mapping. There's a lot more going on than just using a LUT and you have natural rolling off highlights and you're not crushing your shadows or your midtones and it's actually looking a lot better than when you were using a LUT. So, Nice and simple, but still really, really good, right? We can make this a lot easier by, you know, coming up here, making a new add power grade album. So I went to gallery, add power grade album, and then I'm just gonna say grab still by clicking, right clicking on this window over here. And then I'm gonna click below those numbers and I'm gonna change this to URI, and then I'm gonna say CST. So now whenever I wanna add a CST, just like you used to with a LUT, you know, if I reset this, you would come here, go LUT and then go find your LUT. All you have to do now is just drag this over and there's your CST and your footage is converted. Nice and simple, right? Amazing. So what I wanna to talk to you now about is where do you put a CST in your node tree? So if you, I'm gonna reset this quickly. If you've got a node tree, something like this, I've just got some shortcuts, so I'm just quickly adding some nodes to show you. So we've got our node tree like this. You know, you would typically go through your node tree and do what you're gonna do, but where do you actually place your CST for the best results? Well, this is the method that I'm gonna to suggest to you. What I'm gonna suggest is if you're going from LUTs to using this method now, using CSTs, 
please, please follow uh, what I'm going to show you right now because it is going to allow you to get the best results. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our project settings, go to color management, and then change your timeline color space to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate and change your output color space to whatever your output is going to be. For me and for most of my projects, that's always Rec 7 and 9 Gamma 2.4. So I'm going to click cancel because I've done that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add your CST to the last node in your node tree if you're working on a clip by clip basis. So I'm going to explain what that means in just a second. But essentially what I'm going to do is just come up here, go to my gallery, and add that CST onto my last node like that. And then pull this over. And now I've got the conversion happening, but I also have, uh, you know, all these nodes before. So I've placed it at the end of my node tree. And this is why. Let me show you real quick. I'm just gonna toggle that off. So here I've separated my node tree out like this so that I can show you what I'm meaning. So if I were to draw a line down here, everything before that line, is going to be in DaVinci Wide Gamut, which is this huge color space. So any adjustments that you do there is pretty much gonna be in this log space because it's a pretty flat and wide uh, color space. You're going to be able to make adjustments that feel a lot more natural. They are not gonna be adjustments that you can easily break or clip your highlights or compress your shadows or break any colors. It's gonna be pretty wide and it's gonna be very forgiving. So this is how professionals work. I myself work like this on every project I work on. I've delivered TVCs to, you know, all over the world uh, using this kind of method um, or a similar kind of method. And uh, it works great. This is how professionals work. Um, essentially. I say essentially because there's a lot more to it, but I'm showing you a really quick way that you can work in a very similar kind of method. So everything before here is going to be done in the, this huge color space. And then everything after that, after the CST is going to be in Rec 709. So anything you do after your CST node is going to be done in a Rec 709 color space, which is much, much smaller than a DaVinci wide uh, color space, which is really, really big. So you're going to be able to clip your highlights. You're going to be able to break your color a lot easier. So it's so much better to work this way because uh, you're pretty much giving yourself the best way to be able to get the most out of your footage. So that's about it. So to sum it up, LUTs are quick, but they are rigid. CSTs can also be quick after you set them up correctly and you save them as power grades, but they are so much more flexible. You get way better reproduction of color and luminance, and it just gives you a better result. You work like a professional. So if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.